Hey, LabCode agents. We're on, finally. We've been trying it for a while. Uh, again, it's Long Don and myself, and we're here to, again, to help you out just to talk about staying calm, talking about anxiety, just the right things to, to do. We're going to keep on doing this just to help out our, uh, our industry because we see that some people are getting hit with it. I mean, a friend of ours today, uh, we found out she's been dealing with it for a little bit, her husband. And so we just want to do our best to, to keep you focused and to let you know that things will eventually get better and the right things to do right now to keep you calm. So Long, go ahead and get this going, buddy. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, we got to take this seriously, right? Some of us, you hear on the news and stuff that unless you're older, which is so far the stats been true, looking at New York right now, we have our own stats now, so it doesn't have to be from China or South Korea, but in New York alone, 70% um, of the, the people died were over the age of 70. And then 10% yeah. of people who died under the age of 70 had some underlying medical conditions. So this thing is serious. So there's a lot of unknown going on out there. Uh, you know, but uh, one thing that you and I know with absolute certainty, right, is we as a human race is, is at war with the coronavirus, you know, and there's been some, and, and, and they're, they're, you can't see with the naked eye, right, they're invisible, but they're massive in numbers, man, and they are, you know, extremely dangerous, and we've seen some epic battles going on in China, South Korea, Italy going through right now, and there's no doubt in my mind we're going to have one right here in the United States very soon. You know, you're already seeing some signs of that. So uh, I, I think that there's a way for us. There's no doubt that, uh, you know, if we do these things, you've kind of been hearing out there. So you and I are just going to summarize. I mean, it's just like war, right? Number one is hold the line. I mean, hold the line. Don't let them get through you. And what I mean by that is let's, let's be healthy. You know, eat right. Exercise. Um, and your immune system you know, when you can so you can stop them from getting to you, right? And if for some reason, you know, that didn't work, you got to figure out a way. Number two is uh, cut off their supply line, you know, like a war. Don't let them use you to infect other people. You know, all the stuff you've been hearing out there with uh, social distancing, you know, staying at home, staying clean, um, you know, so that we can flatten the curve. Take that seriously. I mean, you see some kids out there in Miami spring break, you know, uh, making it feel like it's all normal. It's not normal right now, you know? Yeah, uh, I, think, I think we forget also that we all have that urge to want to go out. We all have the urge to want to help our clients. We all have that. We're, we're human. We need interaction. And so don't think that it's just you who wants to do this. Don't think it's just you who needs to go show property to clients to make money. Trust me, it is all of us, especially if you're one of those states like I am, where they've shut down everything. I can't even go show homes unless I put my license on the line, right? And so there, there's a reason they're telling you to do this. There's a reason because some people are dying, even if it's not us, our age, you know, we still have to be cognizant that this does affect other people and we can be the carrier. So I, I want to transition into things that we should be doing long. Uh, there are some things that, that you and I do consistently to, to remain calm. And I'm not saying I do this every day, but look, uh, I do my best to, to get up as early as I can. And one of the things that I do, and you may not do this long. I, actually, I didn't, we didn't prepare for this part. Um, uh, the first thing I do after I do my regular thing, I'll brush my teeth and get going. Uh, I sit down and I pray. Uh, I pray and I go through the process. I've been doing it since I was a kid. And then I go into a short meditation. No more than five minutes. And the things that I go through is I quiet my mind and I start thinking about the things that I'm grateful for. And I start focusing on my breath in and out. And you start seeing that your mind starts focusing on more, uh, more things that are positive because you're, you're focusing on the things that make you happy. And so I always remember every time I'm doing this, I always remember Tony Robbins saying, look, if you're doing this right, you're going to feel like you're alive. Like when you open your eyes, you're going to be so thankful. 
and, and so happy that you're alive because you're taking the time to think about the things that are amazing in your life, even if you're surrounded by absolute chaos. And the next thing I do, uh, so those, that takes me about seven minutes total. Then I go into reading a short excerpt of a book. Some people read the Bible. I like reading this called uh, Daily Stoic. It's a good book, one that I've been reading for a while. And you can pick at any day. It's, uh, they're labeled each day, you know, April, October, whatever. Uh, but it keeps me focused. You know, I'm, I'm a history major, so uh, that's all. all uh, I, I love reading. So that's what I read for about, that takes me about a two, two minutes. And then I go into my daily affirmations, uh, which I just shared on a brilliant tribe as well. So I've been doing affirmations since I was 26. Six. And I learned them from Tony Robbins. He calls them incantations, right? And I didn't know what the hell this was. But I grabbed his, and those were my very first ones. And so I copied them, and then I changed them, and then I added. Now I have like eight pages worth of affirmations. And I, I just read five or six, and then I focus in on one, and it sticks with me for the day. So, so far, that's only a 10-minute process there, man. And then I go into journaling. And to me, it's really important because a lot of the things that we're feeling right now, the frustrations, the sadness, the anxiety, whatever it is, once you start writing it down, for me, I leave it on paper. It's done. And sometimes I don't even ever look at it again. But it's just the fact that you're putting it down into writing, right? It feels like you've just removed it from yourself. So... Uh, after I do that, I go through my, my goals and my, my blueprint, what I call my blueprint, just quickly how my day is going to look. And then, and then I start looking at my email, going onto Facebook, social media, all of that. Now, it doesn't happen every day long. I'm, I can tell you sometimes I wake up and I go directly for my phone, right? And we're human. So, but that's the ideal process. And, and I think right now, it's important that you have some type of routine that gets you focused on taking on this day because it's a dangerous time. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Uh, I do similar things. For me, I actually start the night before. So I take a look at my day tomorrow. So I'm gonna do it tonight. And right now for us tomorrow, Mike Bonier, as you know, my business partner and I, tomorrow we're gonna have a full normal Monday meetings with, with our, our team. So we we'll, so we went to Zoom versus uh, in person. So we're going to do a meeting tomorrow. So what happened is I usually have a lot of meetings. And tomorrow I don't have a ton of meetings because, you know, people are home. So maybe we start filling a calendar with other things, to substitute, right? Maybe call mom, call dad, check in, call friend you haven't talked to in a while, you know? Maybe binge on a show, put on from 2 to 4 o'clock a show you've been wanting to watch for a while, you know? Uh, read a book. So if you, if you put in your calendar, the thing you're supposed to do and treat your new normal, as normal as you can. If you plan your days, still, at least you have something to look forward to. Okay, it's two o'clock, what do I do right now at two o'clock? Boom, on my calendar, that's what I'm doing. So that's something that I would do because it'll help you, you know, not to have the unknown, but like, okay, what am I doing today? Nothing going on, you know? And then you start watching too much news and see all the negative stuff out there. So, you know, maybe read a book, like you said, maybe jump on and listen to a podcast from you or Nick or whoever, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, uh, look, this has been going around this idea of having a structured morning since, uh, since the beginning of, of, of time. So uh, people can claim that they created it. But look, e even even the great uh, Marcus Aurelius had a had a morning process. Benjamin Franklin had an amazing morning process. And now a lot of you have, have heard of the miracle morning. Uh, that's really reincarnated of everything else in the past. So uh, you, you pick whatever you want to gravitate to in the morning. I, I tend to gravitate to things that make me feel grateful for those things that are around me. And then I, throughout the day, it's harder for things like the news or whoever I talk to bringing me down. It, there's less of a chance for that happening. And so uh, you're right, Long. The day usually starts the day before. So tonight, I'm already planning for tomorrow. This way, when I wake up, I already know when I look at this, right? I know exactly what I'm going to be doing. I know who I'm going to be talking to and uh, why I need to be ready mentally, right? So good, good point. So if you guys have any questions for Long and myself, go ahead and ask.
I know we're in different, we've got like five different Facebook groups running right now. So we'll catch your questions. Just go ahead and ask them. And I know Long, Long put some great links up above or right below wherever they are. Can you tell me about those, Long? Yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, right, we should be educated because there's so much rumors flying on out there. And, uh, you know, just know the facts. So the, the one that we posted from the CDC, it's about, you know, what some of the symptoms are for coronavirus and what you can do to prevent it. You know, like cleaning your hand, you know, social distancing, that kind of stuff. So just normal stuff to make sure you know. So, you know, okay, those are the facts. This is what's happening, you know, versus don't think of some, you know, someone tell you this is what you need to do to prevent it, you know drink some crazy drinks or something, yeah? <laughs> uh, buy some, something weird online just to, you know, cure the, the virus or something. It doesn't exist. Yeah, that's true. Because we don't really know. So just stick to the professionals that know. Uh, make sure that you're listening to the right people. Uh, and again, like we told you in the last one that we ran, that last one had like 6,000 views already. If you can't find it, go to Facebook on our business page, Lab Code Agents. You can find uh, Long and I were talking about anxiety and the steps to take to calm them. And so, Long, what have you seen is also helping people take on anxiety and that, that feeling that they don't know what's going to happen, so they freak out a little bit? Yeah, because you, the reason you have anxiety is because you, you're afraid, right? You, you don't know what's going to happen. You have all the, um, all the unknown that is. So we talked about last time, control the unknown the controllable. Like you can't control the uncontrollable. So there's certain things that you can't control at all. If you're going to try, you're going to be more frustrated and, and have high anxiety. You might have a heart attack or something out of that. So uh, just, just do that. And then uh, we talk about surrounding yourself. You know, you're the average of the five people you hang around with. That's just not in terms of success or wealth through, but also for positivity. You know, find people who are positive people and so that you can hear uh, you bounce off idea off them. Hey, this is what I'm hearing. What do you think? They're probably going to help you be more positive than negative. You know, uh, for example, we all know that we're going to have more cases. It's going to go up by a thousand percent because more testing become available. You and I might already have it right now. We don't yeah, know. Right? That's true. So the test is going to show that a lot more people have it. And a lot more people will get over it. And the average is about 1% or so of death, right? So, yeah. That's a large number when you take 1% of the huge population, but the positive way to look at this, 99% of us will survive, you know? So those are some of the way to look at the positive side to it and not dwell too much on the negative. Yeah, look, I, I think what they're saying is that eventually it'll be down to 1%, you're right. But when they look at the stats right now, it's like 3%. But, but that's, that's because there's so many people infected, they don't even know. Exactly, that's why. Uh, that's the point I wanted to make here with you. And, here, I heard a story this morning, but hold on, let me take a drink, dude. I heard a story this morning. It was somebody sent me a YouTube video of, of a rabbi talking about the story of a lobster. I don't know if you've heard this long. And they said, look, what happens with a lobster is they have a hard shell. And when they're growing, what happens is that they have to, they, they, press, they press against the shell and it's painful. And then it sheds, right? If they go under a rock, they break it, right? And then they grow a new one, right? And that's what happens every time they get bigger, right? They break out of the shell. It's a painful process, apparently. And so he, he said, it's just like what advers adversity is for us. You know, it's, it's a painful process. We can either hide or we can pretend it's not there or we can take it on and realize that it's an opportunity for us to grow. And I think us as, as real estate agents, we're in an all a leadership position. People look to us to find shelter, right? People look to us for, to find their dream. This is, this is a lot of money that people are putting into something that they've always wanted to have where they want to grow a family. And it's our opportunity to look at this and say, look, if people are, if the government and the CDC and whoever is telling us to stay home and not go out, right, it's a responsibility that we have. It's a duty that we have to, to humanity and as agents to be able to, to follow that. Because when this is all over and people know that you were the one showing property outside, you don't, you don't want to have that tag on you, right? Because 
you want to be the one that helps people. You're calling people and saying, hey, how are you doing? Is there anything I can do for you, especially the elderly? Let me drop off a, a bag of food for you. Tell me what you need. I'll drop it off at the front, knock on your door. At least you know it's there and, and then I'm out. You don't have to even say hi to me. Uh, find ways that you can actually help instead of finding ways that you can uh, squeeze by and cheat spaces here and there. I think that's the difference, right? Because this is happening to all of us. And the way that we respond to this adversity really will help us become who we're going to become in this next state. Yeah, because when this is all over, guys, whatever we do right now, it hit people are going to remember, right? So how do you want to be remembered by, you know, uh, in our state here in Minnesota, uh, you know, we don't have those restrictions yet, but people yeah. are taking those steps. But you're right. I mean, one of the points that I want to make, too, is, is this is the time you work together. You know, reach out to people, especially the, the older people who are more vulnerable. They might have to get out of the house. You know, maybe you can help them go pick up some grocery for them. Leave at the door, like you said. You know, uh, I know that uh, food delivery is huge right now. Uh, you know, we, uh, meals on wheels, those are really cool as well right now to help people out. But whatever we do right now, when this thing's over, people are going to remember. And, you know, make sure that uh, you make the right decisions. Yeah, man, I, I agree. Look, it's, if it's not affecting you, it doesn't mean it's not happening out there. Just remember that. And this is a, this, this is a serious time for a lot of people. And uh, we're, we're really seeing people's true characters right now. Are you standing up for other people? Is the fact that we're staying home and we're letting the medical people do their thing, the police do their thing, the people out there that have to be? Uh, we've been deemed as non-essential in California, real estate agents. We're not essential to uh, helping the situation, right? We're, they don't need us to advance anything that's happening. And so I agree. Let's continue to do what we can from the state that we can, like what we're doing right now, and reaching out to neighbors and friends and family that need help. Bong, anything you yeah. want to add, man? Yeah, it's, it's the one last thing that I know that it will take to, to defeat this is your mindset. You know, if they creep into your mindset and you have negative thoughts, we're going to lose. So everybody got to be positive. Listen to positive people. Reach out to positive people. And let's make sure we keep our mindset up because... This thing will get worse. If you know that, you'll be all right. And what I mean get worse is we're going to have more cases. Yeah. It's going to double, triple, quadruple. I mean, this thing's going to go up fast when we have the, the testing come out. This uh, is, we haven't even seen the next state, yeah, right? right? It's going to get worse before it gets better. So yeah. hang on to people like Long and myself. Text us, call us, message us, uh, find people that, that will keep your mindset at a high level at long you and i uh we've got people close to us that we're always reaching out to and just making sure that we're okay and just talking uh because we all have these tiny little moments we're like mm, we're doubting right and it's okay because we're human but don't let it dwell right agree thank you man so uh let's keep on doing this let's find a, another topic to help everybody out there and we'll get some more questions. Yeah, I would love to, from the group, maybe they can post them and say, hey, Long, Tristan, it'll be good to talk about this. And then, then that way in the next call, you know, our key is to keep people positive, And then we can talk on stuff that people are interested in hearing about. And good idea. More prepared uh, and, and to help out. Great idea. I'm going to do that. I'm going to ask, hey, what questions do you have so we can answer them the next round? Yeah. Thanks, Long. I appreciate it, man. All have right. a good Sunday. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Hi, buddy. Love you. Love you too, man.